Thank you, Rob, um, and thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, we're pleased to have you um, really on this webinar to talk about college essays. And also thank you to Dr. Hawk for joining us this evening and to provide your expertise. Um, a little bit of background about myself and why this topic is really of importance to me. Um, as Rob said, I spent about 16 years in higher education. I've probably read somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 15,000 applications in my career, uh, maybe a little bit more. Um, and I've seen a lot of different essays, and I've seen where students really um, thrive with their college essay in the admissions process. Uh, to give you a little bit of background, um, I served as a director of admission at Stanford for about two years, and we saw a lot of different types of essays, and the essays that really stood out um, were the ones that the admission officer read and then really took that essay and became an advocate for the student during the admissions committee. And so it was an opportunity for the student to really tell their story. And Peggy will actually go into detail with a lot of the different strategies behind writing an effective essay and how it can really help you to stand out. Um, I remember a lot of different ones. I remember ones that really worked well. I remember ones that didn't work well um, and everything in between. And happy to share those experiences with you uh, throughout the presentation. Um, at Chegg, um, I actually work as the Vice President of College Outreach, and I left Stanford so that I could have an impact in more students' lives than I could at one, any one institution. And so at Chegg, we work with approximately 6 million high school students and offer a variety of different services for students, anywhere from finding the right fit school and finding scholarship opportunities to something that we just launched recently about a month ago in which we allow students to connect directly with professional high school college counselors um, to really help them through the process. And I know for myself over the last four weeks, I've actually connected with well over 30 students um, to help them with their overall application, particularly around the college essay. So this is something near and dear to my heart. Um, this is something that I know a lot of students have questions about. And I'm really glad that you all are here tonight um, to really go through this and find different opportunities to enhance your essay <clears throat> or to even get started because you don't know where to start. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Hawk and let her have the presentation, and I'll be interjecting uh, between the slides and then also at the end for Q&A. So I'm delighted to have the opportunity to speak to you all this evening, and I certainly have been working with students for many, many years and have seen how putting in some time and really being thoughtful and careful about the essay can make an application more effective. And that, that brings us to, to the to the flow of what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about why do colleges ask for an essay, because understanding its purpose helps you be more effective. We'll talk a little bit about how you find the story that's best for you to tell. And then we'll look at some general guidelines and writing tips that will help you revise and refine your, refine your essay so that it represents your, your best writing. And then we'll take a little bit of a look at the common application prompts and help you think about them in ways that might help you formulate your own story. Next, let's talk about why the essays are required. I always like to start with, with a quote from Virginia Woolf, the author, who said, events have little meaning until we know to whom they happened. So when a college reads your application, they see that you have many academic accomplishments and many co-curricular accomplishments, but many other students who are applying will have the same accomplishments that you have had. And so the colleges really want to know how are you different from other people who've done some of the same things that you have done. They really do want to know to whom those activities and events on your application happened. And you should actually, as much as we moan and groan about the time this takes, you should actually be happy that you have this opportunity. So much of your application has already happened. You can't do anything about it. The, your grades are not going to change dramatically between now and the time a college reads your application. You are not going to have some dramatic new accomplishment. Your teachers pretty much already know what they're going to write. 
So your college application is the one part of this process that you still have complete control over. So here is your chance to distinguish yourself. When you think about it, when colleges read applications, there are some students whose performance is well below what that college will admit, and those students will be quickly passed over. There are some students, the Olympic athlete, the student who invented, you know, who won the Westinghouse science talent search, the students who we call walk on water. Okay, they're pretty quickly going to be admitted. But most colleges are then left with a large number of applications from students, any one of whom would be a good fit for the college and any one of whom is admissible. And that's when they have to make tough choices. And that's where the essay can make a tremendous difference. When the college is comparing you with other students who are similar academically, have taken similarly rig rigorous classes, and have similar extracurricular accomplishments to yours, by using your essay to show them who you are, and you can make them look forward to having you be part of their community. And that's really where the essay makes a difference. Most essays are neutral in the college admissions process. I've read a couple of times for colleges. And most essays neither hurt nor harm the application process. We want you to take the time to make your essay be one of those that actually advances the student in the application process. Next. So the question is, how do you decide what distinguishes you from other students? What is it that you want the college to know about you? So we all say um, you have to find a story that only you can tell, a story that will let them know whether you're athletic or artistic. Maybe what really makes you stand out is your empathy or your musical talent, or the responsible way you care for your siblings or your cousins. But meanwhile, here you are staring at a blank piece of paper, not knowing how to get started. This is a strategy that has helped a number of students, hundreds of students actually, with whom I have worked. Look at, think about those words like athletic or artistic or friendly. Um, what are the words? that really, really strongly describe you. Who are you as a member of your family? Who are you at school? Who are you with your friends? Do you love to play sports? Are you the person that everyone turns to when a club needs a poster or a t-shirt design? Are you a good listener? Are you the shoulder to cry on or the sounding board when somebody has a difficult decision to do? Are you the go-to person in the hall when someone's having trouble with math? Are you someone who's, who loves to play the piano or the violin or the guitar? Do you spend your free time helping your grandparents or caring for younger siblings? Are you the behind-the-scenes worker for student council events? Do you love numbers? Do you love poetry? Do you love to think about how the brain works? Think of all of the ways that you might be described, and list 15 to 20 descriptors. All the different adjectives, adverbs, or phrases that could be used to describe you. You should be able to get to 15 or 20. When you do that, then what you want to do is cluster those words because you should be able to consolidate them down to about mm, four or five words or phrases that capture the most important aspect of who you are. Next. So then what you're going to have to figure out is what are the stories that you can tell that will show the reader these good qualities that you have identified. So look at those key four or five words or phrases that you came up with and start thinking about 
stories from your life that could prove at least two of them. You want a story that can prove two or three of those qualities or um, character strengths that you have. And to find those stories, think about the stories. What does your mom tell your grandmother when she's, you know, when she's not mad at you and she's telling your grandmother how wonderful you are? Um, what are the stories you would tell an aunt or an uncle whom you haven't seen in a long time? What are the stories that you might tell your children about your high school years? And as you start thinking of these stories, think about them. If you think of a movie script, you know the point in the movie where all of a sudden you get a sense of who this character is and where they're going to go later in the movie? Or those moments in the movie where you see a character changing and you know that their approach to life is now going to be different. If you can think of your life as a movie script and come up with some of those moments that show who you are, those are really good stories to tell. And then think about, if you think about the stories that your family tells about you, what are the recurring themes in those stories? Because those recurring themes will capture the essence of who you are. Also think about what are the fun stories for you to tell. When I'm working with a student and we're brainstorming topics, when they light up when they tell me something and they get that big smile on their face, then I know that that's a story that they will have fun writing and that it will therefore be more effective. So at the top of, at the, top of the page of paper, you should write down what is it that you want the college to know about you. Because you can't write an essay effectively unless you know what its purpose is. So right at the top of the page, perhaps, that you are mm, responsible and athletic um, and empathetic, if those were your words. And then write, jot down some stories you could tell that would prove that about you, some moments from your life, little anecdotes from your life. Then circle one and just write that story. Just as what they call in English class, free write it. Don't second guess yourself. Do that a couple of times, and one of those stories is going to jump out at you and be worth developing further. Once you get the story that you want to develop, then the hard work really has begun. Next. Because you want your essay to work. That story is a vehicle for you to teach the admissions committee something about you, to help them know to whom your grades and activities have happened. And it's not like English class writing. It's not the formal writing that you're used to. It is not the five-paragraph essay. You need to write in the first person, in your speaking voice, as if you were talking to your favorite uncle, not probably not as informal as talking to your best friend. You have to avoid cliches. You, you, your experiences are probably not ones that no one else has had. So you have to tell it from your point of view. You have to tell it the way you experienced it. And again, make sure the essay tells the reader something new about you. The reader has a list of all your activities. They have a list of your grades. They have a list of your test scores. You don't need to repeat that in the essay. And remember that these essays are being read by people who sit and read essays from early morning to late at night, cup of coffee after cup of coffee. So you need to capture the reader's interest with your opening sentence, and then you need to leave the reader satisfied at the end. And those are aspects of the essay that will develop with multiple drafts. A good, a good college essay should take somewhere between four and 10 drafts. So you need to give yourself some time to do this. And be, be aware um, of the, what I would call the Mac essay. Um, you do not want to write the essay that, that says, I practiced all summer and made the varsity team. And you don't want to write, our team vowed to make the championship and we all worked so we were proud even though we lost the final game. That story has been told too many times on my service trip to wherever, 
I was amazed at how happy the people were, even though they have nothing. These may have been really important experiences in your life, and you may choose to write about them, but if you do, you have to figure out what about your experience of that was uniquely you and that demonstrates something about you that the reader couldn't figure out otherwise. The reader knows that if you were on the championship athletic team, you practiced hard. The reader knows that you experienced um, a new culture, if you, a culture of poverty um, when you went on that service trip. So then you need to tell them more about the who you were. Perhaps you were the person who kept your service group calm during the storm. Perhaps you were the person who rids the cliques on the sports team. If you can't find something distinguishing about your experience, then you need a different story. And then think about the fact that you need to get right to the point with your story. You only have a certain number of words. So usually in your first draft, you spend a paragraph kind of getting started, and that paragraph needs to be deleted by the final draft. Just get with the point, grab the reader's interest, and keep going. So let's look at some writing, specific writing tips next that you can use to make your essay more effective. You're going to write in a natural speaking voice. And one way to assess whether or not you've done that is to read your essay out loud. When you read it out loud, it should really sound like you talking. That When I read students' essays, when they're not in the room, it should be an echo of their speaking voice in my head. If English is not your first language, that's fine. You should get some help so that your essay is grammatically correct. But it should have the lilt or the rhythm of your speaking voice. So you might not use the same word choices that a native English speaker would use. But that's going to make the essay more you, and it's going to give the reader more of a sense of who you are. Do not use thesaurus words. Nothing makes a reader roll their eyes and groan more than a, than a word that jumps out at them as awkward and just not what would be used in a speaking voice. And it takes away credibility from your essay if it really doesn't sound like a 17 or 18-year-old talking. And then you want to use what we call show, don't tell writing. That is, you want to have the reader be where you are experiencing with you. And on the, and the next slide, we'll start helping you see how to do that. The way you bring the reader into your story and show them who you are rather than tell them is to use vivid details, to bring in dialogue, to bring in sensory language. These details make the reader feel like they're right there with you at the beach. So let's say, and your little nephew falls in and starts to drown, and you run in and rescue your nephew. You could write in a very boring essay, um, I felt like an adult the day my nephew fell in the ocean and I rescued him. Okay, matter of factly. But what if you wrote instead I felt the hot sand under my feet and the cold of the waves washing over me and gave them some sense of how you loved that moment at the beach and then all of a sudden you take them to how you felt when you saw your nephew go under the water and went to rescue them. Let them have be there in the moment in the place with you. Let them feel how you feel. Let them hear what you say. Dialogue can be very, very helpful in making a story come alive. Next, remember that you can't write an effective essay unless you know what you want the reader to know about you. So always keep in mind what you want the reader to learn about you. You have to prove what you say. You can't just say to the reader, I am really friendly, um, or I love the use of numbers in sports. You have to tell the reader a story that proves it, that demonstrates it. 
if you if you uh, go off on the tack of writing about somebody else who's influenced you, make sure that you keep the story about the influence on you, not too much about the other person. And if the point of your essay is about a lesson that you learned, that's fine. But you don't need to pretend you learned a lesson, uh, learned a lesson if you didn't. And if you are going to write about learning a lesson, then you need to show the reader how you were different after that lesson. You need to show them in action using that lesson. But great essays don't always need a moral. They just need to be real. Application readers have great radar for hyperbole and fiction. You need to present your genuine best self. Um, sometimes when I read an essay that's been overly helped by a parent, I will say that my BS meter just pegged the needle. So make sure that it really is you who's talking. Next, again, it's the, the when you're doing those final edits, you've got to have, as we said before, a good opener, what your English teacher calls a grabber, and you need to have a satisfying conclusion. Because you want to wake the reader up when they get to your story, so that they'll pay attention. And you want to leave them liking what they just read and satisfied with what they know about you. You have to be aware of the two personal story. If you're going, if you're thinking about sharing about mental health struggles or the intimate details of the devastating experience, be sure that you run that by a caring adult who understands you and your application process. You don't want to be labeled as that kid. You want to be identified by the positive strengths that you're bringing with you. And you don't want the essay to prove that you're a careless student. So of course, you're going to proofread and proofread and proofread some more and get someone else to read it for you, someone who's a good proofreader. But when you ask someone to read it for you. You're asking them to read for grammar, punctuation, spelling. Don't let an adult take the you out of your essay. Don't let them take your voice out of your essay. No one else should write sentences in your essay. Too many times, a, your mom will send you off to a family friend who got admitted to some impressive university 100 years ago. And they will want you to turn it into a business letter, which, of course, is not going to be a personal essay that represents you well. So next, let's take, let's take a look at the, the common application prompts that most of you are going to be writing about. So before you pick your prompt, you should decide what you want the college to know about you. And Think about which prompt lets you paint a picture of the who you want to present to the colleges. Again, what are your most important, compelling personal characteristics? And which prompt lets you tell the story you want to tell? Once you know this, what story you want to tell, um, you will be able to find a prompt that allows you to do that. So one, one of the prompts asks you whether you have a background or story that is so central to your identity that you believe your application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, then, and you're going to share that story, remember that it asks for a background or story that is central to your identity and that you would be incomplete without it. So you could look at, it could be that you're a musician and your whole life has been around um, music. Or you could have found that um, the most important thing to you has been writing poetry. But you're going to have to convince the reader in this essay how important this is to your identity. So be sure that you take that background and let them see who you are today as a result of it. 
The next topic is recount an incident or time when you experienced failure. How did it affect you and what lessons did you learn? So you're going to tell one incident and you're going to use when you experienced failure and you're going to use that as a vehicle to show how you were changed as a result of that how you became more of who you are now as a result of that. So it could be as simple as, um, if I'm back to being that musician, perhaps I really blew the sight reading part of of an audition. Um, I remember doing that once. And what did it do? Well, it made me learn to be more confident and to prepare more. Maybe you want to write about the time when you failed a math test. How did that affect you? And how were you different as a math student as a result of that? But remember, all of these are vehicles for showing the reader who you will be when you arrive on their college campus. The next prompt says, reflect on a time when you challenged a belief or idea. What prompted you to act? Would you make the same decision again? So the key words again, challenged, a belief or idea, you need to focus this. What prompted you to take action? Would you do it again? So think about this. You might, there might have been a time when you stood up in class and you took the point of view that was different from everyone else in the class. Think about What was it inside of you that gave you the courage to speak up for your point of view? How was that received? And would you do it again? Or perhaps you challenged your parents' beliefs about rules for high school students. And what what was the experience of that? And would you do that again? Again, that's showing who you are as a result of that decision to challenge the belief. And when it asks, would you make the same decision again, it's asking you to reflect on your values and what's important to you. And again, that's a way of showing who you are. The next prompt is one that has been a challenge for some students, particularly to handle effectively. It says, describe a place or environment where you are perfectly content. What do you do or experience there, and why is it meaningful to you? Remember, the key part of this essay is not the describing of the place or environment. It's the describing what is it that you do there, and why is it meaningful to you? So sometimes students get um, here spend way too much time describing the environment, and they forget that the important part of this question is why is it meaningful to you? What can I learn about what's important to you? When I, you? I can learn that if you share with me what you're doing in that place and why it is so meaningful to you. Maybe your favorite place in the world is to go sit under a tree and read. What kind of books are you reading and why do those have meaning for you? Maybe it's that you're you're most content when you go fly fishing because you love the challenge of placing that fly in just the right place. I say that to somebody who would never have the patience for that. The next prompt says, discuss an accomplishment, event, or event, formal or informal, that marks your transition from childhood to adulthood within your culture or community or family. Again, keywords, one accomplishment or event. It could be formal or informal. There was a transition in your perception of yourself that you felt more adult as a result of that. And it was within your culture or community or family. So again, it's one of those, if you go back to when we talked about the movie script, one of those moments in your life when, when you felt that you were different in some way as a result of it. Now, very, a very large number of students will choose to write that the accomplishment was getting their driver's license. 
So if you're going to write that, you need to very powerfully make it about your experience of that. Was it that when you got your driver's license, you became very responsible for your younger siblings? So I would caution that that's a difficult um, essay to write if you're choosing your driver's license. But what about the first, if you've worked, what about the first day on the job as with adult responsibilities? So be careful with this that you do not make it um, a story that could be told by every other 17-year-old. And again, the key element in this story is how were you different after that transition? What does that tell me about who you are now as a result of that transition? So in the next slide, we come back to tips that help you make your story one that will serve you well. You need to take control. You need to decide what it is that you want the college to know about the best of who you are. And then you pick the prompt that best lets you do that. So again, remember, this is the part of the application that you still have full control over. And think about the fact that the colleges are admitting students who they want to have in the classroom. They are admitting students who will help them have a lively campus with lots of activities. They also want students who will help further the sense of community on campus. So everyone needs good listeners as well as strong leaders. So think about what is it that you will bring that will make a positive contribution on the college campus. And that's going to be your good story. So some additional thoughts for the next slide. Um, do check the web pages for each of the colleges that you're considering. Often they will have helpful hints from their Office of Admission on what they are looking for from the essay. But they're all looking for students who they would love to have as part of their living and learning community. And then do where you're using the common application and colleges have college-specific questions, there's a reason for those questions. Those are ways that the college is seeking to find out whether or not you are a fit for their community. When a college asks, basically, why are you applying to our college, they want students to come who will thrive in their environment. So they would really like to know that you've done your homework and figured out why you are a good fit for their campus. If a college asks a question about um, what books have you read for yourself in the last year, it's because students who are readers are students who they are seeking. If a college asks um, what do you care about in the world, it's because it's important to them to admit students who care about the world. So in many respects, the college-specific questions can be more important in the general common application essay. And too many students wait until the last minute and do those the night before they are due. They really deserve as careful consideration as your primary common application essay. There's a reason why colleges ask supplemental questions that are uniquely for them. And if a college is asking specific questions that you really, really can't relate to, then you need to go back and do some homework and see whether that college is indeed a good fit for you or not. And then finally, you, a good essay is one that you have enjoyed writing. It, you sh it shouldn't be a story that you have to force out of yourself. It should be based on a memory that you enjoy telling. If you enjoy telling the story, then the reader is going to enjoy reading it. And with that, I think we'll turn it over to Bob Patterson a little bit. Sure, Peggy, very insightful information uh, for the audience and even for me it all resonates extremely well with exactly what we were looking for when we were evaluating applications and I, I think a couple of things that you mentioned is exactly what I've been talking to students about the last couple of weeks, um, particularly around the shared experience piece, um, around the mission trip. I actually had um, one student that was writing about um, their making the swimming team and then the next session that I had with the student was about making the football team. 
and it was basically the exact same story, um, and it was a great accomplishment for them in their own lives personally, but in the context of what the university is going to see, they're going to see both of those essays, and it's about the takeaway that was much different for each student, and so we really spent a lot of time talking about how to actually make that different and make it unique to the student, and your strategies definitely the ones that, that resonate well with the students um, to really make that a much more uh, powerful essay. Even around, um, you mentioned the mission trip and how the people were happy. And I think in both uh, cases of students I also worked with, it was almost exactly word for word of what each student said. And one student did um, a, a service trip in Louisiana and the other student did a service trip in Honduras. And so they were basically the same thing, but what was the different takeaway uh, that made the student uh, stand out and a unique experience? And, so think about how you approach that and you know it's tough to reflect on that and to think about how many students could have similar experiences um, but what about the experience itself really made a change in the student or it had an impact on the student and then more importantly what did they do with it after they had that impact and so it wasn't just that oh and it really made me think that there are people in this world that have that are a little less unfortunate than I am um, but actually, okay, you made that statement, and then what did you do about it as being, you know, less unfortunate? Did you do something else when you went back to your school or to your community or helped to make that situation even better? Um, so, you know, those are the types of things that, that stand out, and I think about when um, schools that have admissions committees where a reader actually has to become the advocate for the student, and they have to tell that student's story to the rest of the admissions committee because that is the person that read the application. The rest of the committee didn't read the application, and it's the admissions officer's responsibility to tell the student's story and be that advocate. And by being able to pull out those stories um, that the student's telling in their essay are going to make that, that conversation even more powerful for the reader. So I think with that, I think we'll turn this over to Rob to moderate a little bit um, to really talk and answer some of the questions that the students have. Yeah, thanks, guys. A lot of great questions coming in already, so please type away, and we have about 20 minutes to get through as many questions as possible. So the first question is about the essay structure. If it's not supposed to be a five-paragraph essay, how should the essay be structured, if at all? So I think the way the essay is structured really depends on the story that the student needs to tell. But one strategy that works, I think, for many students, and, and Bob will then chime in on this, is to start with an anecdote. Tell a story that shows you in action, and then show, and then show that was. And so it, it might be a three-paragraph essay. It just depends on the story that you that you have to tell. I would say. You absolutely have to get uh, a good essay. Is going to typically have some dialogue. It's going to have some sights, sounds, smells, tastes. Um, it certainly needs to have a story that captures your attention at the beginning, and it does need to have a sense of completion at the end. But not that you have. But the end does not have to repeat the beginning, which is what a five-paragraph essay usually does. Bob, what is your thought about that? I agree with you, Peggy. I don't think there's any set format, um, and it's really how the student wants to write their story. Of, you know, I'm sure just like I have, you've worked with students that have had three paragraphs, students that have five paragraphs, students that have seven paragraphs, and I think whatever gets the point across, um, it doesn't have to sit into one particular fit into one particular format um, to make it effective. So again, it's more like writing um, a chapter of your autobiography or a memoir. Reading memoirs is um, a really good way to, to get some ideas for the kind of language that you use. Excellent. Next question is, if you are applying to a specific program, for example, the engineering department at a college, how important is it to write your essay about what drove you to this field and your passion for the subject? Should you acknowledge that at all? So it's going to depend on the college. If it is important to the college that you write that, then they will typically ask you that in the supplemental question. So very often, in many colleges, your intended major is not an important aspect of your freshman admissions. In some it is. So lots of colleges will ask you um, if you're applying to their engineering to tell them something in a supplemental question. 
if oh, that that's the story of your life has been your um, inquisitiveness around things that leads you to want to be an engineer, or if, if you've had an amazing hands-on or internship experience that shows a lot about your intellectual curiosity and strength, then that might be your best essay. And I, I agree with you, Peggy, and, and I think some schools, you know, working at five different universities, um, I think back to my time when I was at Berkeley, and Berkeley doesn't necessarily ask um, students to write about engineering or computer science uh, if that's a major that they're interested in applying to. Um, however, um, if students need to definitely address that because they're looking to see that the student has an affinity or a passion or an interest in engineering to make sure that it's a good fit. So not only looking at their extracurricular activities, but combining that with what they've done um, in their essay to have a little bit more of a mention because what they ultimately want to see is that a student who's going to be admitted into one of those fields is actually going to stay in that field. And not only stay in that field, graduate, and then continue to do something in that field after graduation for a career. Um, now and I also I, think back, go ahead, Peggy. Sure. That's where going to the college's website and reading yes. what they say about the essay is going to be really helpful because Berkeley's going to tell you when you read about the essay that they would like for you to, to address that question. Absolutely. All right, great. So I have a few that are kind of tied together here. So I'm going to ask you three questions at once. We're upping the difficulty for our presenters here. Uh, question one, how do I tell a sad story but not make it seem like I'm seeking sympathy? Next question mm -hmm. is, wh when does an essay become, quote, too personal? Mm -hmm. And the third question is, I've written a story on bullying because I feel as if that experience was unique to me. Is this a good topic to talk about? I'll let Bob address that, those questions. Yeah, I think, you know, there are certain things that I think as long as you are comfortable with writing about things and telling it in a way that you're explaining a situation and you're not complaining about a situation um, or trying to make an excuse for a situation, I think that's absolutely fair game. Um, I think about a time when I was at Berkeley and I was doing a summer camp uh, for disadvantaged students from Los Angeles that came for a three-day workshop at Berkeley. And there was one young woman that talked about um, her walk home from school and how her older siblings always told her that she shouldn't go this certain uh, path uh, back home because there had been some gang violence there the previous week. And she said, well, I've always walked that same path. I'm going to continue to walk that same path. Nothing, nothing's going to happen to me. And so she was walking home with her friend um, on that path that her older sibling told her not to do. And she said, the next thing I knew, I heard gunshots, and I dove onto the ground, and my friend dove onto the ground as well, and the only thing I saw next to me was a pool of blood because my friend had just been shot. Um, and it was a very personal statement. Um, and it was even more personal because I actually was reading the essay and giving her feedback as she sat across the desk from me, and she was tearing up um, as she knew I was writing, reading the different pieces of the essay. And so it was obviously very personal to her, but it wasn't necessarily about the incident it's itself. It was how she actually grew from the incident, how she learned from the incident, how she then started to have a, a focus at her school about anti-gangs uh, um, in her school and in her community. Um, and so there was a very personal aspect to it, um, but yet she, she, played it in, she, she portrayed the situation into how she actually grew from, from it. Um, I think there's, you know, Admission officers are going to feel empathy um, for applicants. They're also going to feel sympathy for applicants as well. And as comfortable as you are um, telling a story, um, I think it's it's fine. Um, I also, you know, there are times where we would read essays at Stanford, um, and we may have some students that wrote about a lot of things and had also written about some things where they had actually contemplated suicide multiple times. Um, and for us as an admission office, it wasn't about admitting or not admitting this student because of what they wrote, but it was about making sure that we were aware that if we were to admit this student based on everything else in the application, to make sure that this student was going to be well aware of the services and the resources that we had on campus once she got there to make sure that she was both uh, mentally and physically healthy and to do well um, at Stanford. Um, and so, again, I think it's, it's your comfort level that you have. Um, it's the story that you want to tell. Um, and I think it's just 
um, understanding that there is somebody on the other side of the desk that is going to read it. Um, and so, you know, understanding that it's not just going to go out into cyberspace and everyone's going to read it, but somebody is reading that personally, um, and it's whatever information you want to share with them. I don't know, if Peggy, if you have a different point of view on that or not. No, I would just say that um, you don't want to use too many details that will make the reader squeamish. Um, and so if you can find a trusted adult to run it by, that would be helpful. Um, and it, it's a different kind of example, but I, I did have a student who um, was really curious about biology. And she, she this is kind of a lighthearted example, but she was writing an essay about when her dog killed a squirrel. And she took the squirrel and dissected it. And she went into really gruesome detail about the dissection in her first draft. And I said, what if an you know, somebody who really isn't comfortable with biology reads this. So again, you don't want to make the reader squirm, but you do, um, sometimes you, you, you need to tell a story that, that is somewhat uncomfortable. Um, just, I think, be careful of how much detail you use. Great. So we got a lot more questions here. Um, quite a few. I'm going to try to consolidate here around length of the essay. So if they give a minimum word count, or I guess more frequently there's a, a maximum word count, how, is, how important is it to stay within that suggested count? If you feel like you have a great essay, but you went a little bit over, is that okay? Can you speak to that a bit? It'll be pretty obvious. Typically, you can do a, a print preview um, of your essay, before you, of your application before you send it. A lot of app, um, essays will cut you off, and that would not represent you well. Most essays can be teared down. You can, you may have written a great essay, but you can go sentence by sentence and ask yourself the question, does this sentence advance my story? Can I tighten up this sentence? Do I have too many clauses? And if you remember on the SAT, those make the sentences better or make the paragraph better exercises, you can do that with your own writing. So I would say that it's very important to stay within the word limit. If you're talking about two or three words over, most of the time that will be okay. Um, and nobody is going to count the words. Great, thanks. Uh, question here about how these essays are actually graded or scored. Bob, can you offer some insight into that? Go for it, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, as I said, I've worked at five different universities. Every single one of them was different. Um, and some were scored on a one to five scale. Some were scored on a one to seven scale. Uh, some were not scored at all and just used as part of the write-up whenever the reader was summarizing the entire application. So every, every school is going to be different. Um, I think what's important is not necessarily the score, but really sort of we're following the guidelines that uh, – Peggy had set out throughout the presentation uh, to really make sure you hit on all the key points um, and answer the questions that the admissions office is asking. All right, <clears throat> lots of questions asking about specific topics and whether they're good or appropriate topics or not. And obviously, it kind of it's a little subjective, but I'm going to throw all these topics out and, and, and see what you guys think about them. Uh, essay about sexuality, uh, racism, forgiveness. My outlook and view on life, being a gamer or a geek. I, I don't think there are any verboten topics. It is um, what does the reader learn about who you are, and is, does what they learn make them want you to be, invite you to be part of their community? And so what did you learn? Who are you as a result of that experience? Bob, what do you think? I, I agree with you completely. Um, I think it's understanding your university that you're applying to as well. Um, I think one of the things I remember uh, an essay that I read when I was at Chapel Hill, I was a student from Texas, um, and nothing against any students from Texas, um, but this particular student was writing about racism, and it wasn't necessarily that he disagreed with racism. Um, it was that he agreed with racism, and that he was applying to Chapel Hill um, and that he wanted to start the organization that he had started at his high school, which was basically a, a white supremacy group um, that he had oh. started at high school, and he wanted to start that at Chapel Hill as well. And if you would know, you know Chapel Hill and the desegregation of the South and Chapel Hill's role in that, 
that was that's definitely not the right institution to be applying to with that essay. Um, and probably a lot of school is probably not the right essay to be applying to. Um, but it was something he was passionate about, and that's what he wrote about. I probably would have advised him to steer away from that essay. Um, I'm probably glad he um, did not ultimately go to Chapel Hill, but that's a whole other story. So I think just understanding the institution, understanding what you're applying to, um, and what the environment is like at that campus. In any, um... I, think, I think um, when you talk about sexuality, I have certainly read some very, very compelling um, coming out essays um, reflecting self-knowledge um, and learning to value oneself. That can be very um, well done, but again, it can also be um, a cliche. So it really depends on, on how you, what you do with it. Great. Any examples of uh, specific examples of a good opener or a hook for an essay that was memorable, or in general, what do these what do these things have in common that um, captures your eye? There, there is no. You can't borrow anyone else's. It's all about the story that you're telling. So I would say what they have perhaps in common is that they are vivid and. What I would say is read your first sentence out loud to someone and ask them whether that sentence makes them want to know the rest of the story. That's really when I have students share with each other. That's the question that we ask. Bob, what do you think? I, I agree with you completely. Um, you know, I, I don't think you can take anything from anyone else. It's going to be your own story. Um, and the hook is really how you... You know, how you really experience whatever it is that you're writing about um, and really letting the readers want to read more. I mean, they're, they're going to read the essays. Um, and like Peggy said in the beginning of the presentation, the essay is not the only thing that's going to get you admitted or not admitted to an institution. Um, and sometimes it may not make a difference at all based on everything else that the institution is looking for. Um, but it's, it's telling your story and just really making the reader want to read more um, by your own words. So I don't think adopting it or taking something from someone else is going to necessarily do the trick. Um, I would encourage you um, this year in particular, um, I've already had three students that wanted to write an essay about Ebola. Um, I can't even imagine how many students are going to be writing about that topic. Um, and so I can't imagine the admissions officers reading the 150th essay about Ebola um, and how students want to solve that problem. So I would be very cautious about something like that that you're going to start an essay about um, because it just may be a little bit of a turn off. Um, I remember three years ago every essay was about um, creating an app um, and so you know every every year there seems to be a theme um, because there's something popular in the press and so you may not want to start off with that or even write about those particular subjects unless it's something really unique about yourself. Thanks. Can you touch on what to say, if anything, in the additional comments section? Well, you don't you don't want to waste the reader's time, so you want to use it well. And so I would step back and say, what is there that the reader doesn't know yet about me that I would want them to know? Um, can I use that space in some way to help the admissions committee have a fuller understanding of my accomplishments and, and who I am and what I would bring. Um, Bob, when, does, when in admissions is it, um, do you wish that students hadn't used that section? Sure. I mean, the, the, the section really is anything else that hasn't been addressed in the application anywhere. And so I think if it's something that's already been addressed, then there's no need in writing something else. Um, but actually, you know, I was working with a student today, and she had written her long essay about her passion for science. Um, and her supplement essay that she was working on, she had also written an essay about her science. Um, and then she had, had written another essay that was a little bit um, more about her family, but had science sort of embedded in it. And she didn't talk anywhere else about the interest that she had in the arts and in music and in theater. Um, and I had recommended to her that this is an opportunity in the additional comments section. You've really spent a lot of time talking about your academic focus and your passions um, as it relates to the STEM areas, 
but there's this other opportunity in the additional comments to write about something else that hasn't really been addressed anywhere. And so I encouraged her to write about the arts. So if she were to write another essay about science, I would say that's not necessary because you've already addressed that in multiple ways. Um, but this is an opportunity for you to write about something additional um, that they could really discuss um, when discussing your application. That, that can also be a good place to address if there has been a challenge along the way. Um, let's say you're a student who has learning disabilities, but you have so much more about you that's valuable, and that's what you're going to write your primary essay about. Then in the other information, you could simply write briefly, I have, this is the challenge that I have, and this is how I take advantage of resources so that I can be successful, just very matter of fact. So then the college would have the full, um, the, the full picture, especially if, for example, your grades were stronger in most subject areas and, and weaker in another one where the, the learning disability was particularly challenging. It would clarify the picture for them. Or if you had um, mono and, and one semester's grades were, were lower, especially where you, you won't have a strong school counselor letter, you can just address it there so that, you're, uh, so that the read of your application takes into account all the circumstances. Great. Well, thanks, everyone. We're just at the one hour mark, so we're out of time. There's been a lot of great questions. We haven't got a chance to get to. I do want to share Bob's uh, contact information on the CHEG uh, admissions counseling service right here. So if you do have other questions for him on the essay, he can um, be reached at this link. And additionally, um, we will be sending out a recording of this video and uh, the slides so you can see Peggy's great presentation and soak up her pearls of wisdom as you are writing your own personal statement. Um, Bob, anything to add on, um, on what your work is and ways that students can connect with you on the um, admissions counseling side? No, the, the only thing to, to add is if students do need individual help, we actually are working with an organization called I'm First, which is for first-generation college students that need additional help with their essays. Um, and so reaching out to them, um, they are actually working with us to uh, provide free counseling services for students who may not be getting it in their high school or need to supplement the help that they're getting. Um, and then we also have about 35 high school counselors that are available on our site too um, that students can come in and ask questions about their essays or get feedback um, about their overall application. And so if students need additional help, um, they can definitely reach out to Chegg. Excellent. Peggy, any final words of wisdom? No, I just wish them all good luck and say allow yourself the time and allow time to write and rewrite so that it's your best work. Excellent. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you to our fantastic presenters, and uh, thanks to everyone who attended and asked so many wonderful questions. We wish you all the best in your, um, your college journey. Have a good night.